Good morning and welcome once again. And thank you for sharing in this time of worship with me and Dee Dee Yancer and Bob Fletcher. We are indeed so grateful for your spiritual presence to us. And we hope that you can feel our spirits present with you as well. As we begin worship today, I invite you to calm your mind and heart, breathe in God's goodness and grace, and center yourself in the thought of finding deep rest for your spirit in this brief time that we share together. Let us center ourselves now for worship. Come to me, Jesus invites. We come to you. Come to me if you are tired. We come to you. Come to me if you carry burdens. We come to you. Come and discover rest for your souls.
Let us pray. Like an oasis in the desert, O God, worship satisfies the longing of our souls. Today, help us to find the good in this life by delighting in your presence. And help us find the hope you have placed deep down in our innermost selves. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Hello, friends. It's so good to be here with you today. And I'm happy it's a beautiful, sunshiny day here. I hope it is wherever you are. I want to know, do you have any idea what this is? This is a brick. And you've probably seen them, and probably many of you, your houses are made of them. But anyway, this is a brick. And can you think or guess how much this brick weighs? Well, I weighed it this morning, and it weighs about five pounds. And so, five pounds isn't a whole lot, but what do you think if you had to hold this brick like this, it's not so bad. I could probably hold it a few minutes like this. But if I had to hold it like this, I don't know how long I could hold it because it's actually very heavy and it's pulling on my shoulder and it's really kind of hurting. So I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna hold it like this. Well, the reason I'm using this is that sometimes we have things in our lives that are weigh us down much like a brick. We call these burdens. And I was just wondering if you could think of something that might weigh you down or might weigh down somebody that you know, someone that you love, or maybe someone you saw on television that you don't even know, but you know they're carrying a burden. Well, I wrote on my brick because I wanted to save this. I'm actually going to keep this and probably use it as a doorstop. But I wrote on my brick some of the things that I consider are burdens, and they might be burdens that bother you also. Schoolwork, that's a big one for me. Thankfully, I just got done with a bunch of schoolwork this week, so I'm feeling less of a burden right now. And then we also have COVID-19, the pandemic, the sickness that's going around, that's keeping so many of us in, inside our homes, which leads to social distancing, Social distancing has really been a problem for people because it leads to some loneliness. And then some of us carry around things like guilt, where we feel bad about things that we've done in our past. And sometimes we carry guilt around with us for things that we haven't done. Some of that is, that's, those are kind of things that we need to get rid of. Um, and then another thing, sometimes people carry around, especially in school sometimes is you carry around the burden that people make fun of you and that maybe they don't um, treat you nice, they, they are mean to you. So that can also be a burden. Well, I'm gonna set this down for a minute because it's getting heavy. And I just wanted to ask you, back when Jesus was walking around on the earth, when Jesus was with us, Jesus mentioned that we were going to have some burdens in our life and that there would be times when we felt like the world was just weighing on our shoulders. And so there's a, a very beautiful verse in the Bible, and I'm going to read it to you. But first, I want to show you a picture of this. And I don't know how well you can see this from there, but this is a yoke. And this is something that we would put around um, like uh, cows or animals that helped us do work on a farm and you would put your head through there and that would be the way that and then they would tie it up and they would drag things around possibly on the farm so i wanted you to know what a yoke was well in the bible verse jesus mentions this come to me all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads and i will give you rest put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. 
My yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. So what that's telling me is that instead of trying to carry all this around yourself and worrying about all of these things, let Jesus help you carry that burden. Let Jesus carry that for you and that, that's what he's there for. And so that would make a lot of things easier for you. So when you feel burdened, when you feel like things are just kind of pressuring you or pulling you down, go to Jesus in prayer and ask Jesus to help you with that. And so now I want to pray. So if you would, if you close your eyes, fold your hands and bow your heads. Dear God, sometimes our burdens are too much to carry. Help us remember that Jesus will give us rest. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew 11, 28, 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So I was reading a blog online this last week, and the author was confessing that even though he talked a lot and taught and wrote about the subject of letting go, he wasn't actually doing that very well himself. And then he, he went on to list all of the many things that he needed to let go of. Things like the unchangeable past, and the unknown future, things like his unhealthy attachment at times to his parents and family and friends and some of his memories and events in his life in the past, things like his own ego or the many feelings of pain and guilt and shame that he had. Like this blogger, I'm sure that we can all relate to uh, knowing in our heads from time to time that we're clutching too tightly onto things and feelings, but we can't seem to actually release them to God very well in practice. I read another story this last week about two Buddhist monks and a young woman. One day, the two monks were setting out on a hike to reach a temple that was in a valley uh, on the other side of a forest. And as they were making their way through the forest, they came upon a stream that they needed to cross. But right in front of the stream, there stood this woman who was dressed in a beautiful silk dress and who obviously was at a loss as to how she was going to get on the other side of the stream without getting all wet and muddy. Without any hesitation whatsoever, the older monk of the pair asked the woman audaciously if he could pick her up. And much to his surprise, she agreed. And so he put her on his shoulder and began wading across the stream. Meanwhile, the younger monk, who was in complete shock and very uneasy because he knew that the older monk was breaking religious law, nonetheless followed on behind them. When they all got to the other side, the young woman thanked the two monks and went on her way, and they continued on, but they didn't get ten steps before the younger monk said, how in the world could you have possibly done that? You know that we're not even supposed to make eye contact with women, much less pick them up and carry them. Again, without any hesitation, 
the older monk simply said, oh, I'm sorry, are you still carrying her? Because I put her down as soon as we got on the other side of the street. And with that, the older monk forged ahead and left the younger monk to contemplate his words through the rest of his journey. Well, in this story, the older monk's um, willingness to put the needs of the young woman even ahead of his own religious law, along with his ability to immediately let go of the guilt that he surely felt for not following the letter of the law, is a good lesson for us. And it's actually a good example of the theme that's going on behind Jesus' words in our scripture this morning from Matthew's Gospel. As we remember, Jesus was always so very concerned by the fact that some of the religious leaders in his day were heaping on huge burdens of religious obligation on the Jewish people which not only made them feel guilty, but actually excluded so many of them from being able to participate fully in their own religious community because of things like their inability due to their poverty, so many of them, to pay for those required sacrificial offerings. And so throughout the Gospels, we see and hear Jesus rebuking some of these religious leaders for always requiring that the letter of the law, every jot and tittle must be fulfilled and followed while neglecting and ignoring the spirit of the law's intent in the first place, which is to express God's love to us and God's will that we love God and ourselves and our neighbors in return. This is really the passion that's behind Jesus' words of comfort in our scripture this morning. He wants his brothers and sisters then, and certainly us, to know today that even though we may heap heavy burdens on ourselves, and worse yet, on others, God is not heaping those burdens on us. Instead, God is gently asking us to love God and ourselves and our neighbors and then God invites us to enjoy this life that we've been given. Certainly circumstances in life place heavy burdens on us. Life itself asks us to carry very weighty things. Things like the realities of sin and evil and suffering and death the realities of hatred and warfare and this terrible pandemic that we're in with our social distancing and for way too many as we know, social isolation actually. Some of life's burdens that we bear are placed on us due to no fault of our own and others we create ourselves and then hold on to for way too long, like the blogger I mentioned in the beginning. But whether life's burdens are heaped on us due to no fault of our own, or whether they are of our own making, Jesus simply wants us to know that God isn't making them or causing them or bringing them on. Instead, God is indeed the one who will take them if we will let them go. But of course, like the blogger, we all well know that letting go and letting God is easier said than done. I have felt like that blogger so many times where I knew in my head that I needed to let go of things, but I simply couldn't make that translate into actually doing so. When I have, however, ultimately been able to let go, the process is always the same. It begins with me being able to sit still long enough to know and to be attentive to what's really going on in my heart. To ask myself what my true, real, and deep feelings are. 
Am I feeling worried or anxious or afraid? Once I can actually name the feelings that are going on in my heart, I can then ask if something might have happened recently or otherwise to make me feel that way, which I may need to let go of as well. Once I get to that point, I'm then able to let go of those feelings and those things that may have happened by giving them and releasing them to God in prayer. Like anyone, I have to do this daily and often multiple times a day, but the process is always the same. And the great good news is that I'm never rejected, but instead of feeling weighted down, when I actually do let go, I feel free and light. Like a baby bird finally letting go of the clutches that she has on the branch of a tree to experience the joy of flying free, when we do let go and place our burdens in God's care, we do indeed receive refreshment for our heart and soul and renewed strength and energy for living this wonderful life that we've been given. Come to me, God says, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Very simply this morning, I pray that many burdens will be lifted for you and for all of us as we give whatever those burdens may be over to God's good, faithful, and everlasting care this coming week. Thanks be to God. Amen. professionals 
essential workers, and all those who have lost their jobs and livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up our prayers for all those who carry heavy burdens of leadership in every sector of our lives, government, law enforcement, health care, business, and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up our prayers for all children and families and communities across the nation and around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, we place all of these longings of our hearts and all the burdens of our lives into your loving hands as together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the table of Christ with gladness and thanksgiving for the strength and sustenance that we find here. We come to the table of Christ with praise and celebration, for his yoke is easy, his burden is light. We come to the table of Christ where our hungry hearts and thirsty souls are satisfied with the finest food. This is the table of the risen one whose love and compassion knows no end. This is the table of the risen one whose love and compassion are poured out for us and for the whole world. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. God be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Give thanks to God, blessed Trinity. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Praise to you, divine creator. Thank you for the gift of life, the beauty of nature, for the structure of your living word, and for your steadfast, loving kindness. Praise to you, divine redeemer. Thank you for sharing our human existence from birth through death to everlasting life. You have shown us a way worth emulating, bringing healing and hope to those most in need. Praise to you, divine sustainer. Thank you for the vision to see beyond the immediate, for being our calm in the midst of the storms, for giving us the strength to build an ever-expanding community and the courage to bring about any change necessary within our lives.
And in like fashion, after dinner, Jesus took the cup and said, This is the new covenant of God's love poured out for you and for the world. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O oh God, send your spirit now upon these gifts of grain and grape, that they might be for us the presence of the living Christ. Pour out your spirit on us, that through us others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and with one another. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So come now, for all things are ready. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. This is the cup of Christ poured out for you and for the world. Take and drink.